Hello friends and especially hello to Rebecca. So Rebecca got in touch, Rebecca's in New Zealand, she got in touch because she's struggling with how to get her um, Ebru paints and supplies working properly. Um, she hasn't got access to a teacher in New Zealand so she reached out to me to see if I could help. Um, and I've had a few of you contacting me through YouTube um, wondering if I could do one-to-one um, -one lessons um, online. Um, I can, but I'm going to start by just giving you um, a rundown of materials that I use to see if it's matching the materials that you use, um, because if you're using completely different materials, it's going to be difficult to, to advise you. Um, I'm using Turkish Ebru uh, powdered pigments that are mixed with ox gall acid. Um, this is a brown. This is a brown liquid. So if you've got it in Turkey, it might say "Sir Odu Ben Ben Mari Ox gall." So ox gall acid, basically, or turbot gall, fish turbot gall. And over here, so this is where I stir the gall into my paints. So when we get the paint, so mine came from Iron Ebru. So if you've got your paints from Turkey, it'll probably be this kind of consistency, unless you've got it in the powdered form, in which case you'll need to crush it on a marble slab, turn it into a fine paste, and then transfer it to your jars. So mine's been pre-pressed for me in Turkey, but it's still, from this state, it's still gonna take about two months to get it to work properly. So we transfer all of this into these big jars, and then with our Ebru horsetail rosewood brushes, we stir in the gall acid so for a jar this sort of size, so this is holding about a litre, I would use um, about, well, maybe three or four capfuls of this to begin with. So what's that? That's probably about 50 mil, 50 millilitres, up to 100 millilitres, so that it's got a nice strong ox gall odour. And you basically, you're going to have to stir that for about two months, or at least that's what I find with my material. So I stir it about 10 times a day. That's why I've got my material set up here in my studio. So when I'm talking to students, when I'm working, or customers that are coming to buy things, if I work in an open studio, you can't see, but over there is my front door. At any minute, a customer could walk in and ask me a question. But while I'm talking to them, I stand here, stirring my paints. So you've got to do a lot of stirring. And once you've stirred it for a couple of months, then you can transfer it to your smaller jars. I use different sized jars depending on what it is that I'm working upon. Now, because I'm generally working on an A4 size tray when I'm teaching, which is down here, and you'll see that in other videos. If you watch my other videos, you'll see that I work on an A4 size tray, and the reason I do that is because A4 copy paper is cheap and easily accessible to most people throughout the world, um, and I'm getting people coming here. Uh, most of the people that come to me for lessons, they want to be able to do it at home for an hour after work, or with the grandchildren. So I've set up a system that basically makes it as easy as possible for them. Now what I recommend for hobbyists that are just doing it now and again, I actually recommend to use um, specially formulated acrylics and my favourite to use is the Pabeo because they work straight out of the bottle and they work on fabric as well. You can see on this one they've got this little iron symbol. So if you treat your fabric with aluminium sulphate um, and then once that's dry and you do your marbling, you can catch that onto the fabric, iron fasten it, and then you've got a good fast color. So I actually recommend acrylics for people who aren't gonna be doing marbling professionally or choosing it as kind of a lifestyle, because as you can see, it's a real commitment to prepare the paints. 
So it's not something that people who just want to do it now and again, it's something, uh, doing it the sort of traditional Turkish way really is a lifestyle choice because once you start looking after these paints, you've really got to nurture them. So back to those that are doing it with the uh, Ebru pigment. So what I do, once, once I've got it formulated in the jars, so I know it's working well, so I'll transfer it from the bigger jars. So with a pipette, I'll transfer it from the bigger jars into the smaller jars. And then, to balance these, I'll, I'll transfer the gall acid into these little bottles so that I can add it drop by drop. Now these are already balanced because I was working on them yesterday. And so when you're balancing them in the small jar, just use a really tiny amount of gall acid and then test it drop by drop on the surface to see how they're dissipating. Now I'm gonna see if I can get this because I can't turn this around. So what I'm gonna do is pull the camera down so that you can more or less see. I mean, this is all a bit clumsy, but I'm not, I'm not geared up to highly professional uh, YouTube videos at the moment. Now that my channel's getting more popular, I will put much more uh, effort into producing step-by-step -step content so that you can follow along better. But this is a quick response to Rebecca, but I thought I'd put it on my YouTube channel so those of you that are struggling might be able to learn from this. So when you're putting it on the surface of the tray, you want to use a really thin tool or the end of a plastic paintbrush. And once you've got a drop on the end, just touch that on the surface to see how it dissipates. Now that's a nice dissipation. If you want it to dissipate more, you add a drop of gall acid, one drop at a time to your paint. So it's an incremental change. Don't do anything drastic. It's much better to do everything drop by drop, spot by spot. And if you've balanced your paints properly, you should be able to put them inside each other and they should dissipate at more or less the same rate as each other. If you're finding the colors are dissipating differently to each other, you need to um, control the surface tension by adding more gall acid or using, so this jar is a tiny amount of paint with lots of water and lots of gall acid. And what this does is it raises the surface tension so that when you put on, you're gonna see now when I put the red on, it doesn't dissipate very much at all. Look at that. So this is what you're playing with, the, the surface tension between your background colors and your more prominent pigments that you're using. Now I hope that's enough information to kick you off. I know this isn't a thorough, in-depth, step-by-step video. I will start making that. I just wanted to get something out there quickly for those of you that are asking me similar questions. So this method works for those of you that are using uh, pigments that you've sourced from Turkey. That there is gonna be variation with the, the pigments because each supplier is gonna have a slightly different um, composition. So the molecules are gonna behave differently on the surface. So unfortunately, I haven't um, got access to every single different type of compound that you will be using. Um, but the process, the trial and error is going to be the same. Incremental, drop by drop, slowly, slowly. And write down what you're doing to keep track of it or video yourself so that you can watch it back. Because if you do it, um, I found it as well. Like if I'm, um, if I'm coming up with a new pattern, I got in the habit of videoing myself because sometimes you'll do something and then a week or two later you'll go to do it again. You go, I can't remember what I did. I can't remember which colour I added first. I can't remember how much. 
if you video yourself doing it and then you can watch it back or if you're a really good note taker which I'm not so that's why I chose to do it in video format um, then you can watch it back and give yourself um, junky memory so that you could get back to where you were I hope that's uh, good enough to get you started um, I'll send I'll put this on my YouTube channel I'll link it to you Rebecca so that you can watch this and see see where we are so let's see you can respond and tell me where you are at with your um, uh, pigments um, if you think they're the same as the ones I've got and how they're behaving and then we'll we'll take it from there all right thank you for following along I'll catch up with you soon